Hi, Sandro here. This is not steampunk. This is a real steamship. And in this video, we're gonna know all about it. Enjoy the steamship of Schiller. If only we could time travel back to the golden age of the Industrial Revolution and peek into the glorious steam engines of that time. I was able to fulfill this dream when I was given the opportunity to spend over 5 hours on the paddle steamer Schiller, which was built in 1906, 116 years ago. In this video we will dive deeply into the magnificent details of this ancient marvel and you will learn how it works all the way from the captain issuing orders, the machinist carefully controlling the steam engine, to the mighty paddles propulsing the ship. Welcome aboard! First, let me get you some context. It all starts with the Swiss public transport system. This basically includes any kind of public transport such as trains, trams, buses, ropeways, cable cars or even ships. For many people in Switzerland such as me, this makes owning a car unnecessary. We have arrived at the city Lucerne. It is located at the heart of Switzerland and attracts a fair amount of tourists, especially during summer. The Kappelbrücke, its most iconic attraction, can be found on many advertisements and photographs. A small port close to the station allows changing from trains to ships and vice versa. On a beautiful summer day these ships transport a lot of tourists. However, as they are part of the Swiss public transport system, they also serve as a daily transport for regular commuters on their way to work. Some towns also have bus or train stops, but seriously, if I lived here, I would also consider taking a few more minutes and take this view instead. Fun fact, behind these trees lays the famous Rüttliwiese, where our lovely little country was founded back in 1291. But enough of the patriotism. When I recently had taken a ship to go for a hike in the area, I was just as impressed as this dog. Oh man, I just had to do a video about this. So I called the Lake Lucerne Navigation Company, which operates the ships. They were extremely kind and their communication was outstanding. And so, after a few mails, I was told I could go behind the scenes of the steamship Schiller during its daily commute from Lucerne to Flüelen and back an over 5 hour long trip with many stops in between to load or unload passengers. Welcome aboard! The Schiller is a beautiful old lady. It features a cozy parlor, a museum down in its belly, a splendid dining room that is sometimes used for weddings, a restaurant and two terrace decks offering space to a total of 900 people. But the best part to me is the hole down into the machine room as well as the windows allowing to see the impressive pedals in action. Meet the two Michaels who generously spend 5 hours of their time showing me around their ship making this video possible. While Captain Mike controls the ship, Engineer Michi controls the machine in cooperation and exchange with his colleague Moritz. It's important to note that the captain only has control over the rudder, but cannot adjust thrust by himself. This device, which they call a telegraph, simply transmits the captain's orders down to the machine room. The engineer confirms the order, which is reported back to the captain so that he knows the engineer is now working to execute the issued order. Can you imagine holding just the steering wheel of a moving car while your blind passenger located in another room is in control of the throttle and brake pedals? The cooperation must be perfect at all times, and it is. There is a clear set of predefined maneuvers, a precise choreography followed by the captain and the engineer. Additionally, for non-standard communication, there is a tube leading down to the machine room. Super, thank you. Oh, Let's look at some maneuvers in detail. I only have one camera and cheated by combining shots from different executions of the same maneuvers to give you an overview. First, Captain Mike explains how the departure works. Also, zuerst läute ich ihm ab und jetzt sagt er mir, okay, ich bin bereit für die Abfahrt. Jetzt hör ich ab. Und jetzt dann zieht um den Zeil lösen. kontrollieren, alle Seile gelöst und dann gebe ich mir mit Telegraf das Kommando volle Kraft voraus. Und jetzt tut er da unten auf und dann fahren wir an. Und 
Und das war's. Ja, jein. Dann müssen wir einen Moment warten, bis er etwas aufs Ruder anzieht. Weil da rüttelt es schon nicht so ganz ohne. Wenn du jetzt schaust, unter die Felsen kommen jetzt sehr nöch, oder? Jetzt unter die Felsblöcke auch. Und da ist halt schon wichtig, dass man das Ruder auch wieder im richtigen Moment zurücknimmt. Damit das Heck nicht stark ausschwenkt, oder? Wenn du jetzt da hinten schaust, siehst du, wie das Heck gegen die Felsen rüberkommt. While cruising, the captain can go back to the bridge. He will have to leave it again when approaching the next stop, no matter the weather. So, and jetzt tun wir mich wieder ab, die Leute, die Maschine. Und ob er bereit ist. Und. Er läutet zurück, bereit und der Wartsmanöver wieder. Die Maschine wird jetzt nicht mehr angetrieben, sondern das Wasser und das Schiff treiben die Maschine nach, respektive drehen die Räder. Die nächste Position ist Stopp. Und jetzt wird er die Maschine umsteuern. Das heisst, er kann die Räder stellen und dort dann so bereit machen, dass das nächste Kommando auf die Brücke ist und die Maschine dreht und Das ist jetzt der Fall. Und jetzt läuft die Maschine zurück. Dort ist das Schiff abstoppen. Und wenn das alles so ist, wie es muss sein, mache ich hier einen Stopp. Und dann die Maschine genau stoppen und wir stehen genau dort, wo wir anwenden und anwenden. Für das Allerletzte gebe ich immer noch das Zeichen, das Manöver ist fertig und du schnell rufen und dann darf ich das bestätigen. Und jetzt ist das Manöver fertig. Die Maschine steht still, der will nicht bewegt werden, weil jetzt kommen die Menschen auf die Treppe, steigen die und aus. Und fahren wieder die Zelle rein. What a feeling! But it's not always just smooth sailing and routine maneuvers. Captain Mike is always alert and suddenly interrupts his explanations because he spots a potential danger ahead. Ah, da vorne siehst du die Station, oder? Aber du kannst filmen, ich muss jetzt einfach schauen, gell? Ich ja. kann nicht mehr reden. <lacht> Moritz, äh, steht ein Privat an unserer Station, hä? Gut, jetzt wollen wir schauen, was wir machen. Dann wir fahren wir mal zu. Luckily, the parking offenders remove themselves quickly. But Lake Lucerne is very busy with swimmers and all kinds of vehicles, especially during a beautiful summer's day. Captain Mike carries a ton of responsibility. So long as it's done, it's done, it's done. But you know, if you're on the stop or whatever, and you're surfing, if one of them falls from the boat, then it's difficult for us. Then we're going to have to go to the boat. We're going to try to get the boat out of the boat and all the other collisions. Das ist manchmal schon ein Trick. Es verlangt aber, dass man wirklich möglichst weit vorausschaut. Das ist sehr wichtig, weil es gibt so einen Spruch unter uns und der heisst, wenn etwas passiert, ist die erste Frage vom Richter, wäre es möglich gewesen, den Unfall oder den Schaden zu verhindern, obwohl wir nach Gesetz das Vorfahrtsrecht hätten auf dem See. Aber in dem Sinne gibt es äh, kein Vorfahrtsrecht mehr in Rücksicht zu nehmen auf alle anderen. Und wir sind natürlich auch dankbar, wenn alle anderen auf uns auch ein Rücksicht nehmen. Da sind wir sehr froh. Vor allem auch Segler, Surfer, kleine Motorboote. Oder? Da sind wir auch dankbar, wenn die uns unseren Platz und unseren Weg nehmen. Talking about respect and appreciation, it's wholesome to see how well the crew treat each other, no matter their rank or function. Das ist wirklich schön, damit ja. alle hat man es. Wir haben morgen zusammen und einen Kaffee geschwind und das ja, Wichtigste ja. besprechen, oder, was du immer die Informationen gibst zum Tag. 
Ja, speziell ja. ist. Vor allem zu speziell, ja. ja. Das ist wichtig, oder, dass das alle wissen. Ja. Und gerade über Seiler rauf. Ja, wohl. Seiler. Kassi! Kassi! Dann hat es extra weit vorne gestellt, oder Riesler, dass er dann ganz sicher doppelt ist. Hast du jetzt Weifel an mir, Mike? Nein! 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 Super, dass die Zusammenarbeit klappt. Früher die alten Kapitäne und Maschinisten die haben manchmal ein Krach gehabt. Da hat einfach beim Stopp wieder ein Anschein Dreieck durchgelassen. Natürlich hinten sind sie rausgeschossen. Ja, das ist, das ist der so. Der Maschinist hat seine Macht ausgeführt. Ja, natürlich. Oder? Das, das, ist das, ist definitiv das ist natürlich schlecht, wenn es so tut. Also das haben wir heute nicht mehr zum Glück. Ja. And that's our cue to go explore the mighty machine powering this old lady. Oh dear, where do we even start? Here is a schema of the machine's main components. As with all steam engines, a boiler, here in green, heats up water, producing high-pressure steam. That steam is brought to one or multiple cylinders, here in red, where its pressure pushes a piston back and forth. A crankshaft transforms the lateral movement of the pistons into rotation, which is then applied to the paddle wheel, drawn in orange. Let's start our journey at the cistern, where the water is drawn from the lake. We are standing below the water line. The filling level of the cistern corresponds to that of the lake. Machinist Michi explains. The engineers have to manually regulate the amount of water entering the boiler in order to keep its water level stable. One hundred years ago, three men had to work here, one of them shoveling coal manually into the burner. Today it is replaced by an oil heating, producing the required heat and regulating the pressure automatically. 9,3 bar haben wir auf dem Kessel und 9,5 ist echt so wert, was wir wollen. Dann sind wir noch ein bisschen drunter, dann steigt er noch. Modern thermal insulation of the boiler reduces the heat loss and the ship still had 7 bar of pressure this morning, left over from yesterday's trip. Morgen, wie lange brauchst du, bis das Schiff bereit ist? Äh, anderthalb Stunden haben wir eigentlich. Das ist eine Stunde, anderthalb. The heat is generated by the small red box behind Michi. As it's a beautiful day, a large amount of passengers is expected, slowing down the ship. Stops take longer because of all the people boarding and leaving. Also, they walk around, causing an imbalance, and their weight further pushes the ship deeper into the water. Michi increases the target pressure to 9.8 bar to make the engine slightly more powerful and thus giving the ship a faster cruising speed. When light and well balanced, the ship would reach a top speed of 27 km per hour, but today it will likely max out at 25. The pressure of the generated steam is regulated automatically and then brought to the engine. Here is a schema from Wikipedia. The hot, high pressured steam is shown in yellow and enters the engine at the top. The valve allows it to take the path to the left, so the steam rushes to the left side of the cylinder shown on the bottom. Since the pressure of the left side of the piston is now greater than the pressure to its right, the piston is forced to the right side. It's not represented here, but the piston is mechanically connected to the valves. As it approaches its rightmost position, the valve closes the path to the left, but opens up a path to the right, causing the steam to rush into the cylinder from the right side and pushing it back to the left. The process repeats. Of course, the used steam must also be able to exit the cylinder. The exhaust is shown in the middle of the assembly. The valve also controls this. Whenever steam enters the piston to the left side, the exhaust on the right side is open and vice versa. To explain this graphically, I made you this schema. The high pressure steam enters on top. The yellow tube system brings it to the first cylinder, where the valves work as explained before. The piston in the cylinder is connected to a shaft that applies the force to the axle that rotates the paddles. 
This is called a compound steam engine because the exhaust of the first cylinder is also the inlet of a second low pressure cylinder that's also driving the paddles. The cylinders are therefore not connected in parallel, they're in serial. In other words, this ship uses the steam twice, increasing its efficiency. Not bad for 1906. However, there is a caveat compared to cylinders connected in parallel. We can compare this to a bicycle. If your foot is already in the lowest position, you cannot spin the pedals. A single cylinder steam engine can get stuck in the same way. Having two cylinders solves that problem because there's always one that's not stuck. However, with a compound engine, if the high pressure cylinder is stuck, it cannot operate. Thus, the low pressure cylinder gets no steam from its exhaust and the engine cannot start. The machinists are aware of this and avoid this situation. Das muss man einfach wissen, die Maschine läuft nicht in jeder Position, kann, kann die anfahren, kann die anlaufen. Und das ist, kann sehr gefährlich sein. Oder? Da muss man einfach üben, üben und das Gefühl haben für die Maschine. Was passiert, wenn jemand ein Praktikant in Anführungszeichen das verpackt? Ist das noch ein Schiff abgeflappt? Nein, es ist so, wir hätten eigentlich einen der sogenannte Hilfsdampf, eine Erhebung. Den kann man, wenn man den Hochdruckzylinder in der Lage ist, wo der Niedrück anlaufen kann, man direkt von der Hauptdampfleitung in den Niedrückzylinder Dampf geben. In other words, the high pressure cylinder is bypassed and steam is injected directly into the low pressure cylinder. Let's see this in action. The levers on the left side are connected via rods to global valves, allowing the steam to reach the engine. The motion of the axle is picked up by these ring-like, so-called eccentrics, which connect to the valve rods. These rods open and close the valves, directing the pressured steam such that they will push the pistons from the correct side. Note how the rod only activates the valve in short bursts. The length of the rod can be adjusted. The longer it opens the valve, the more steam is injected into the cylinder and the more powerful the movement will be. Adjusting that rod length is done by the engineer by rotating the big wheel. The same mechanism also puts the machine in reverse. Turning the wheel pushes more rods back or forward. They connect to those weights and then to even more rods. I got a little lost there, but... It all comes to moving these insanely beautiful coupling structures up and down. This is what makes the rods going to the valves longer and shorter, controlling when, how much and in what order steam enters the cylinders. Or in the words of engineer Moritz, The technical expertise of both Michael and Moritz is impressive. Also, the engineers have a tough job in this noisy and very, very hot environment. But instead of complaining, they smilingly use it to their advantage. 
According to Michael, the hot valve cooked the sausage just right. After exiting the low pressure cylinder, the steam is brought to a heat exchanger, where its remaining energy is transferred back to the fresh water, entering the boiler. This heats the water up from 20 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees before it even gets to the boiler, greatly increasing the overall efficiency. The remaining steam is finally cooled down, creating a vacuum. The last pump gets it out of the ship and back into the lake. There are more pumps connected to the engine, such as a bilk pump. Some are now inactive and replaced by an electrical pump, because it can be active independently of the machine's operations. Another thing that was replaced is the electrical steam turbine, as it was extremely inefficient. Power is now generated by a diesel generator. However, an ancient steamship sounding like a tractor that will quite destroy the nostalgia. This is why the generator is sealed off in a soundproof enclosure. The water supply system was also greatly modernized a few years ago. This is the purification system that transforms lake water from the cistern into drinking water. It uses a microfilter and an ultraviolet system. Even the water for the engine's boiler is processed. The first stage is a mechanical filter, then the water is decalcified and finally the oxygen is bound to avoid corrosion. Nonetheless, the original pump is still here. It looks like a museum piece, but it's in good shape. Michael carefully heats it up just for me to demonstrate it. So bad. The left side is a tiny steam engine, but without the wheel. And the right side is the part that pumps water. Most parts are still original and they keep working because generations of engineers have carefully looked after them. This applies to the whole ship. I couldn't help but notice that whenever they weren't busy with other tasks, the engineers were oiling and cleaning the engine all the time. Throughout the machine, there are oil dispensers, some freshly out of steampunk, some ancient automatons, some on the move with blazing speed. Furthermore, there is an endless amount of tiny holes in the whole construction, where oil must be inserted several times a trip. The engine swallows 4 to 5 liters of oil per day. Even this little oil pump is connected to the engine, injecting a little bit of oil at every cycle. The engineers need to know how to maintain it, same as they have to know how to maintain every single part of this ship. The seal of the cylinder lets a tiny amount of steam escape. The replacement seal is already standing by. This was regular state-of-the-art technology, eight years before the First World War even started. I'm a bit ashamed of my arrogance for thinking that my generation will be smarter than what our great-great-grandparents were. Of course, technology has evolved in the meantime, for sure. 
But let's face it, after all these years, this early 20th century behemoth is still as much a technical marvel as the gadgets we are so proud of today. The fact that the Schiller can still navigate this lake is due to the care and love of seven generations. Ancient steamships like the Schiller are so much more than just a means of transport. They are witnesses of the past, precious cultural heritage that has been carefully conserved for our generation and the ones to come. They are just as much museum as they are passenger traffic. They are hubs where commuters, tourists and explorers of history come together to enjoy a moment of richness as they are gently carried to their destinations. And that is how the Steamboat Chiller is operated. I hope you enjoyed the tour. As we are entering the final port, I would like to give a big shout out to Captain Mike and engineers Michi and Moritz for dedicating so much of their time and allowing me to film the ship top to bottom. A big thank you also to the Lake Lucerne Navigation Company, which responded to my filming requests swiftly and unbureaucratically, supporting me in my efforts to make this video. So that's it for this time, thanks for watching and have a lovely day.